Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another big team battle gameplay from the Master Chief Collection, this time in Halo 3 on the map Rat's Nest. In this film, I'll be getting more than one-third of my team's total kills, or should I say almost one-third. I'll be uh, getting six times more kills than I do deaths in this gameplay. I'll be using the rocket launcher, shotgun, and bubble shield to great effect at one point, getting an overkill and almost another overkill. Skipping through some of the uh, slower portions and showing you some of my better moments and some of the moments you can learn from as I make mistakes in uh, this less than 10 minute gameplay. So here we go. Let's get started. Off the start here, I'm going to go ahead and grab this Warthog and head towards the rocket launcher spawn, which is on the side of the map. Because I'm only playing with two teammates who I know, Bub Field and 12 Shot. Um, I'm not going to assume that my teammates are going to be great in the Warthog off the start. And the enemy team certainly isn't as they try to charge me bottom mid, which is a really bad idea and end up giving me an easy triple kill here. Now before we move on here, uh, the bubble shield spawns right here. Shotgun spawns right here. Another bubble shield spawns right here. Another shotgun spawns right here. So it's really important uh, to keep those items in mind as I jump over here to grab that bubble shield. Uh, I'd like to point out very quickly a tactic that I use on this player. Um, and that this player uses against me as I pick up this pretty easy kill on him. Uh, when I use this tactic, and when, what the, actually, let's start with the tactic he uses, is a really good job by this player noticing that I have rockets, okay? Really good job on his part. He's going to jump backwards, which is almost going to guarantee that he's going to survive, even though he does lose all his shields. This is a really good play on this enemy player. Uh, this is what you need to do in Halo 3 when someone has rockets. But one of the things you're going to see me do here is you're going to see me whip my scope very, very fast over his head to get the headshot. And um, I'm only playing on three sensitivity, okay? What you can do with a battle rifle, since it is a three-bullet burst, is you can whip your scope over a player's head, and if any one of those three bullets contacts their head, it will be a kill when they have no shields. Really cool. Don't be whipping your scope when they do have shields, but if you're just trying to get the headshot on a no-shields player, this is a really good tactic, especially if you're trying to get a quick kill like this. So I end up picking up that kill. I'm going to back up because I'm trying to reload my rocket, so I deploy uh, my bubble shield to stay alive here behind this crashed warthog. That trip mine instantly explodes, doing almost no damage. Going to peek out and get the double kill. This guy tries to ambush me. I get the triple kill. Looking for the overkill. My teammate's going to help me. And uh, I do a pretty good job of um, picking up what my teammate puts down there damage-wise. Right here, I make a really bad play. Jumping to the enemy team's base and deploying my trip mine, only to have the trip mine instantly explode because the enemy team nades me. And they all spawn there, so I was probably going to die anyway, regardless of whether I deployed that trip mine or not. So right here, you're going to see me kind of move around here and uh, go for the shotgun and bubble shield really good idea to pick these two up and have them on this map. It allows you to deploy it in confined quarters and defend yourself. Um, having a mauler or a shotgun and a bubble shield is really, really important when you're playing this map. That guy's trip mine goes wildly off, but he his grenade doesn't, and he almost ends up killing me. Um, I did not mean to do damage to my teammate here. The trip mine has a very wide radius of damage. And just for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Rat's Nest in Halo 3, all these little yellow barriers inside the base, you can jump up on top of them to get to the top of the map. Do not be using uh, these stairways. In fact, most of the stairways, I'm just giving you a heads up, most of the stairways on this map you don't need to use because of other jumps that you can make like that. It's not an extremely skilled jump to make at all. Now, I really would like to slow this down and explain how I engage this player and why. Uh, my teammate has also has a shotgun, and he takes this guy out as I come around the corner. But this other guy beside him has a mauler. And when you have a mauler, the mauler not, is not an instant kill. If you're close enough to someone with a shotgun, it can be an instant kill. But the mauler is not, which means you have to follow with a melee to get a kill. So, uh, that's what this enemy player is going to do to my teammate here. So what am I going to do? Okay, This guy probably doesn't know that I have a shotgun, but I know that he has a mauler because he just killed my teammate, so I'm going to back away from him so that he can't get the melee. Because if my shotgun blast doesn't instantly kill him, he may get the melee and kill me first, because it takes a little bit to pump the shotgun to get that second shot out. I could melee as well, but it's safer just to back away from him, because I know he's going to charge me, which is exactly what happens. So, uh, that's how you want to kind of play that scenario. You want to definitely have a shotgun on this map, not a mauler. Now, 
this is a really, really interesting use of the theater mode here. I'm going to kind of show you guys this. This is really, really cool. Uh, this enemy player has a really, really good grenade throw. I just wanted to point this out here. He decides to throw a grenade uh, off this little pillar, and it jumps all the way over here and explodes. And as this really cool use of theater mode, uh, I didn't know where I got hit from by that grenade, even though I do end up cleaning up this player right here. Uh, I had no idea where that grenade came from. So it's a really good use of theater mode to go back and see the various angles you can throw grenades from. I probably will try to use some of those grenades, uh, some of those angles uh, later. Once again, I'd like to point out the little uh, yellow barrier. This one is less useful because you can't really get to the top of the base, but these pipes over here are pretty useful. Hint, hint. <clears throat> okay, so fast forwarding through the film a little bit. This is a kind of slower portion of the film. Um, as uh, I've described at the beginning, there are some slower portions. Again, this guy is trying to uh, mauler melee, and I'm going to not quite whip shot him, but uh, just get the easy kill here. I'm using the boxes to jump up on top as normal. Uh, you can find maulers in these hallways on the side here. Uh, so again, uh, going kind of fast forwarding through the film pretty fast here because it's kind of a slower portion. I'm going to notice that there are three people below me because I don't see anyone in front of me on my radar right now. So Halo 3 doesn't tell you whether people are above or below you, unlike Halo 4 or Halo 2 Anniversary. So I'm going to assume all three players are below me, which they are. I'm going to deploy my bubble shield. Oh, I know there's another bubble shield down here. So this is a really great opportunity for me to maybe get another overkill. So I'm going to wait for this guy to charge in. Uh, then get the double on this guy who's one shot and charging in and get the triple kill. Now up to this point, I've done a really good job of faking these guys out. But I did a really dumb play here to, and I didn't get the overkill. This guy would be an idiot to charge me right now. And the main reason for that is because I just in front of his face killed three of his teammates back to back, still surviving with shields, which means he's not going to charge me. So I need to pop out the shield and immediately charge him, and not with my my shotgun. Now, I do an okay job, and I do take him out, but it's not fast enough to get the overkill. I need to pop out immediately and try to uh, get him. I, I may have died here, but still, uh, this guy is dumb enough to throw a grenade, so I likely would have been able to get the overkill if I had just been more on point there. Now, uh, again, some bubble shield tactics. I'm going to... Kind of use the bubble shield, bait enemy players in, get the killing frenzy. Um, I'm going to try to bait out. Now this is a really good play on this enemy player's part. What you want to do when someone has a bubble shield like that is you want to do like what this enemy player did. He peeked inside the bubble shield through a grenade. But he could have done, done even better if he had a plasma. And that is peek inside the bubble shield and throw a plasma at the floor right next to the uh, source of the bubble shield. And that will destroy the bubble shield when it blows up. This grenade that this enemy player threw is going to take out my shield, and it would kill me if I had a sliver uh, less shield. But as it is, I'm going to get one more kill before being taken out. A little bit of lag there, but uh, what can you do? Um, I would also like to point out that I should have in this film used the regeneration fields more. Uh, the regeneration fields uh, kind of spawn on the sides. Uh, they spawn on the sides right here. Okay and uh, right here. So I should have used those more in this film. Uh, it, it's really great when paired with the shotgun. I'm gonna kind of long range shoot here and I'm throw a grenade and my teammate then deploys a bubble shield so I can't throw the second grenade. And I wanna just back this up, which is why this is so dumb. Cause this first grenade goes and it, it gets this guy one shot, okay? But this second, gr this bubble shield ricochets my grenade off here. And I wanna show you guys what happens to this enemy player. Um, as he's going to run out here, and my teammate, Bubfield, is going to juke him around the pillar, drops down and survives, while this guy pursues another player, and he's going to get gravity hammered. So that's pretty hilarious, as I'm going to switch back uh, to my POV here. Alright, so we're back to the point where the, my teammate just deployed the bubble shield, and uh, I'm going to pursue this guy across the bottom of the map. We're almost reaching the midway point of the game in terms of kills. Uh, this guy's lagging a little bit, but I'm going to end up picking out this kill on this player with help of my teammate. Pretty uh, uh, good 
good job controlling the center of the map. I feel like there's a lot of different power-ups and things that you can get on Rat's Nest if you say bottom center, not just the camo that spawns here, but also the two lifts that you have on the sides. Uh, you want to use the lifts to kind of get onto this bridge up here, or maybe even deploy them uh, to get up here really, really quickly. A lot of players I don't see doing that. Um, they use the, the lift very, in a very dumb fashion, throwing it right down here to get up here. You don't need to do that because of the box and the pipes in the side that you can use to jump up here instead. Use the uh, lifts uh, effectively. Don't use them uh, just to do nothing. So I'm kind of running around here. This is a little bit slower portion of the film. I'm going to use this uh, kind of to just go get the rockets in a spectacular fashion and jump right back. Um, now I do trade to get the double kill here. And that's okay because uh, it is two kills and I, just one death that I'm giving up there. If he hadn't had a gunner, I probably wouldn't have done that. Or if I'd been on perfection run, I hadn't had any deaths so far. Again, probably wouldn't have done that. But it's okay because I know my teammate's going to pick up the rockets. I thought that guy was above me, but he's not. And this is a really good play coming up that I make here. Um, this guy has almost two shots on me and I'm still able to out VR him. Now, uh, I'd like to point out something here. You really do want to jump right before your shields go down because it really throws off the enemy player's aim. Now, if you do it every time, that gets a little predictable, and good players are going to recognize that and be ready when you jump. But most players, I'd say at least like 75% or more of players, will not expect you to jump right as your shields are about to go dead, and they will miss the headshot. In other words, they're not going to get a four shot on you with their battle rifle. And you potentially can, or can at least out-BR him, as I'm doing to this player right here. As my shield's almost about to go dead, I jump, and he's not able to get the headshot, even though he takes out all my shields. It's really, really important to do that. And if you're using Bumper Jumper, you can jump with the left bumper while aiming, which is really cool. End up sticking that guy. I was pretty excited about, do, you know, point-blank sticking that guy and somehow surviving, which seems to rarely happen to me in Halo 3. Um going to throw some grenades again into the middle of their generation field uh, to try to uh, take their generation field out. Uh, frag grenades just don't seem to do as much to power-ups. Uh, this is a really good example of what not to do. Um, I'd like to point out that in Halo 3, if you get two uh, full trigger fulls of BR into an enemy player, in other words, six bullets, and you follow that with a melee, it's an instant kill. Here I did not do that. I think missing one of my bullets here. And what that means is that when I melee connected, I didn't get the kill. My next two shots also, none of my six bullets hit the enemy player. What you want to do in this scenario right here, okay, as soon as you connect with the melee, you want to jump backwards and aim down. This is really useful when you have bumper jumper because you can jump while aiming, and you want to shoot them in the head. They're not going to expect that, and the reason why is because when they're so close to you like this, if the player, if I jumped right now, okay, I would be up here, and for the player to look up that far to get the headshot would be almost impossible in such a small amount of time, especially if that guy is playing on three or below, which is likely. So I just wanted to point out that tactic. Um, it's not good what I did here at all, and I did not end up jumping. It's a bad idea. I ended up giving away kind of embarrassing death there. But we are doubling the enemy team score, and I have 26 kills. So uh, right here, I'm going to kind of speed up the film a little bit. Um, I get shot by the Warthog. Going to deploy his bubble shield just to stay alive. Um, bottom mid here. And hopefully he comes back and I can stick him with my plasmas. You always want to have plasma grenades ready on this map. People will get the Warthog and just run circles around the outer edge of the map. Uh, I just would like to point out something. This has happened to me multiple, multiple times on Rat Race. For whatever reason, the game likes to, to spawn you here in front of this doorway. And here in front of this doorway. And if a Warthog is charging you, before you can even get to the doorway, you can get mowed down by the Warthog's chain gun. So it's really important uh, to have plasmas. Um, if you're stuck up there, there's not, there's not a really fast way to get a, some plasmas. So you really want to uh, just have plasmas when the vehicles are coming. Just always try to pick them up. There's two dead center at the bottom, bottom center of the map next to the gravity hammer spawn. So right here is a kind of, again, a little slower portion of the film. I'm going to kind of uh, gonna skip through it here. This uh, fire player with the uh, fire on his head, which you can select now. Um, used to be a bungee only thing. Only bungee members had the flaming helmet. But now you can just select it in the Master Chief Collection if you want. And I'm going to end up sticking this Warthog here, and uh, I'm going to get the double kill. 
I'm going to go for this camo. I don't end up getting it, which is kind of surprising. Uh, this player actually ends up getting it, and I kind of fake him out. So he just goes for it. I don't know why he tried decided to do that. And decided to have a little fun here, throwing the gravity lift into this other gravity lift, just to see what's going to happen. So it's like, oh, wow. Okay. So just kind of mess around here. And then uh, I see this guy, these two people over here. So I'm going to use the lift to jump up here. And I kind of change my direction in midair. There's a lot of players who don't quite know about this. I feel like some people do. But you, even though I jumped in this direction, okay, I can still move in midair. I can change my direction kind of in midair and get onto the bridge. Try it out um, with the lift and uh, just with jumps in general. You can kind of change your direction in midair a little bit. It's pretty cool um, when you do that. Definitely be, uh, for example, running forward as you're jumping. Don't let off of your movement stick while you're, for example, making the jumps that I'm making right now across the map. Um, so I'm just kind of running around and uh, switching weapons, and the reason why I'm meleeing and switching weapons so much is just to remind my fingers that those are the uh, the functions of those buttons. I get that grenade kill on those that guy and get some solid shots on this guy. This film is gonna round out to an end here. If you're not doing anything in a in a game, uh, always remember to like switch weapons, uh, melee, and jump. Uh, especially when you, if you're trying to learn the button configuration bumper jumper, just jump. Just jump around and get yourself used to the way the game feels. Um, swing your reticle, your targeting reticle around a few times and just, just remind yourself of where the sensitivity in your controller is. And this guy tries to stick me. This is definitely what you want to do. Another reason you want to have plasmas on this map is because players are doing what I'm about to do. This other player right now and camping around corners with shotguns. Very, very common in rat race because of the tunnels. Let me get that easy kill on this guy. Now right here, uh, I kind of charge out here, and this is exactly what happens when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you get a Warthog that comes around the corner. That's exactly what happens. And I would like to also point out that when you stick a Warthog in the very, very back or the very, very front, if the Warthog has a full amount of health or you know has not lost much health, then it will uh, stay alive. It won't blow up, um, which is important to realize. So this game is going to round off to its conclusion here um, shortly. Thank you guys very much for watching uh, this Big Team Battle gameplay from the Master Chief Collection. Uh, comment down below. Tell me what you liked and what you didn't like, what you want to see in the next film. Like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.